Pam, pam, pam. Hello, hello everyone. So today I'm going to speak about the biggest mistake that you can do if you want to start your own commodity trading company. And uh, below this video, I think uh, I there is a link that should, uh, if you add your name and your email address, you would get um, a kind of a resume or just um, the resume of the framework that I'm going to use through this uh, this conversation, through this um, this video. So, what is the costliest mistake that you can do when you want to start your own commodity trading company? And when I said starting your commodity trading company, I mean like starting a small commodity trading company. I'm not uh, talking like if you have the means, uh, if you have 100 million uh, dollars to start your <laughs> your community trading company, this is not. Yeah, maybe yeah, it, it will also work. Anyway, so the most important thing when you start is 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 it a market for you? So if you want to start trading sugar, rubber, um, protein, soya bean, whatever. Or is, is it like an ingredient that you want to start trading? Uh, any type of raw materials? Is it is it a market for you? And I'm going to show you the framework that uh, I'm, I'm using to filter all the opportunities that uh, comes to my um, comes comes on my labs. Um, and I think this is a quite useful framework for anyone. So I would go through this framework. And the illustration that I'm going to use um, is going to be the commodity, the wood pellet. So the, for the people that don't know that, so this is wood pellet. This is uh, what we have on the pictures. This is uh, like small pieces of wood that you can use in your furnace. And right now, this uh, commodity is kind of uh, a hot commodity uh, in Europe because of the energy crush. So as in the sales commodity bootcamp that is going to start next week, we are going to sell um, wood pellet in Europe. I'm going to use uh, wood pellet as a, as a commodity to grow through the framework that we are going to see uh, together. So here is the framework. When you have one opportunity, when you want to start trading a new commodity, whatever is it, go ask yourself those questions. So first, the first question that you need to ask yourself is the timing. Is it a good time to start this um, uh, to start uh, to start trading the, this uh, commodity. So let's take the example of wood pellet. So here we have the price of a wood pellet in euro in three different countries. So we have uh, Schweiz, this is uh, Switzerland, uh, Deutschland, uh, this is Germany, and Österreich is Australia. So as we can see, the, the, the price has just shoot up uh, starting uh, late this uh, summer. So, what does it mean? When you see that uh, usually the price is quite stable and then it shoots up, that means that the market is under some stress or whatever. So something has happened that makes the, the, the market go a wire. And when you have those type of situation, this is usually a good time to, to start trading those commodities. If you are a new in-commerce, when there is like a lot of volatility, when this is chaos in one specific market, it's a best moment to this is the best moment to come in with your offer with your product to to make a sell because as you can imagine when the market is flat like this how are you going to make a new sale how are you going to make a, 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 a new, how are you going to get a new customer how are you, get, uh, are you going to get a new product i mean it's going to be extremely tense and all the entrenched player are going to sell to the people that they know and people are going to buy from people that they know so very difficult to come with um with um with something new when the market is flat or the market is, let's say, normal, is working properly. But when you see that there's a lot of volatility, this is also a good time to, to jump in. So uh, here, yeah, this is another um, uh, this is another uh, graph uh, chart with the price of uh, pellets. And uh, the, this graph is the price of uh, pellet that you can use to um, to eat your own house. And this one, this is an industrial one. So this is why the prices is way different. And then when we take wood pellet, 40% uh, against um, uh, the price of coal adjusted with the, the emission uh, taxes, you can see that the wood pellet is uh, cheaper than, uh, than coal to power industrial uh, furnace. So that's also thing that uh, this is a market that we need to, to have an eye on. So... 
So timing, uh, as I'm going to, uh, as I uh, uh, will repeat myself, timing, it's quite important to jump in, to, in a new market. It's better to jump in a new market when there is some, some type of chaos or when the market is behaving in a weird or in a different way that it used to, because that's mean that there's going to be opportunity, opportunity on the purchasing side or opportunity on the selling side. Then trust. So another point that um, is quite important when you want to tackle a new market as a new um, incomer is the level of trust that you need to make the first sale or the first, first purchase. For instance, if you want to buy crude oil, like when one vessel is at least, I don't know, 50 million or something like this, do you think that it's easy to, to come to a refinery uh, or oil field and say, look, guys, I, I, I'm here, I'm new, uh, I'm here to buy a... A vessel of crude oil. No, it requires a lot of trust, and you most probably won't be able to, to put your hand on the product because there is a lot of you need to go through a lot of hoops. You need to show, I guess, your balance sheet. You need to show that you, your money. You need to show that you know how to handle the product. Blah blah blah. So it's very complicated, and it requires a lot of trust. But with the products such as a pallet, I mean, the one truck is like I don't know, like less than uh, around twelve thousand euros. This is not that expensive. If a buyer buy a truck and for whatever reason it's not a good product, is it that bad for the company? It's only twelve thousand euro. I mean, it's okay. I mean, it does not require a lot of trust. This is why I think it's a good product to, to start with uh, with students. But uh, but yeah. So ask yourself, how much trust do you need to to build to sell or to get in the market that you want to uh, to to get in? So um, so yeah. So from zero to ten. Let's say 10 is the highest level of trust that you need. Where do you stand on that? I don't know if you do um, uh, copper, copper cathode out of uh, Congo, and you, you, you want to go there, you want to buy, which is the level of trust that you need to buy and which is the level of trust that you need to sell? Very important. Um, and then what is the trust? This is also the trust that you need to build in the narrative that you are going to give to your to your customer or to your supplier. So, for instance, let's say that uh, it's a product which is extremely difficult to to uh, to get your hand on. So maybe there is only like ten producer of that product in the world, and if you want to buy this product, you need to to go to a producer and to buy at a higher price. This is the only way that you would uh, would say to you. But then, if you buy a higher price, maybe you you find no customer on the other hand to to to, to, uh, to sell at a higher price also. So. So the question is, uh, this is not that straightforward. So this is why when uh, there is in, when you need to, to build up the trust, you also need to have a narrative that fits the um, that, that fits that fits the product. For instance, now we have in, with the student, we are going to sell your pallet, uh, wood pallet out of Greece, and so the narrative is quite uh, easy to sell. It's like look. Uh, the Greece, uh, we have a small, we have a small producer. Um, he has not really been uh, exporting wood pellet out of Greek. He's only serving the local market. But we have approached him, and uh, he said that we is okay to to start to give us his ex the exclusivity of his sales out of Europe. But we need to sell at least I don't know five five hundred metric ton per per month. So this is why we are new. This is why you have never uh, heard of this uh, this producer because this it's a small guide out uh, of Greece. So, you know, this is a narrative that someone could, could understand. So this is why also it's important. So, and for instance, if this is... Uh, and or the other thing about the narrative, it's the context. So let's say that uh, you as a salesman, you, I don't know, you, you, you are selling remotely out of uh, India, for instance. Let's say that you are in, I don't know, uh, in Mumbai, and that you want to sell wood pallet to, uh, to a European French guy, wood pallet out of Greek, Greece, if... <laughs> You, you see that if you are from India, you, you call with your accent, the guy from France is like, but why are you selling out of India in Mumbai? And you know, th this doesn't make really sense. So this will not create trust. So that's mean that all your narrative, all your storytelling must uh, be understanding and everything that you do must have a, a good uh, story behind it. So then you can sell the product or you can buy. Then understand the market structure. So this is also something that is extremely important to understand because I've spoke with a lot of people that want to try or that even 
trade uh, some product, but they don't really understand why it works or why it doesn't work because they don't have a good understanding of the market structure. And this is extremely important to understand the market structure. So you you also understand the market um, you also understand the competition that you could face. So, what do I mean by market structure? For instance, it's it's quite important that you understand how the supply chain in your commodity works. So. Uh, here we have like a, a little diagram that let's say that uh, this is you buy from a mine, then the product goes from the mine to an exporter, then the exporter export it uh, from, from base to SIF to, uh, I don't know, let's say China, and then there is an importer or trader in China, then, then they resell it to the industry, uh, the, to uh, industrial, to a uh, 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 smelter. So, and what is important to know for you, it's, it's, it's to know the margin that everyone is making in the value chain. So are we going to, to speak like 2% for the exporter, 1% for the importer, 3% for the trader, who is going to finance, how, you, how, how are people are making money, and so on. So it's really important that you have a good idea how the market works in your commodity. Obviously, there is like a thousand uh, supply chain different with few uh, tweaks. For instance, maybe the, the, the mine is directly owned by the smelter, it's a possibility, and so on. So there is um, a lot of different structure of the supply chain, but it's important that you know how the most important structure, uh, how the most important supply chain works um, in your community. For instance, um, uh, out, yeah, let's, say, let's speak about milk. So uh, the biggest exporter of milk, milk powder, is in New Zealand, actually. Well, in New Zealand, there's like more cow than people on the island. And it's always rain, so it means the, the grass is always uh, growing. So that means that the, the cow is always eating, so they, they produce a lot of milk. So if you don't know that uh, the biggest exporter in New Zealand and that you are you 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 faced in front of you, of, uh, I mean, in, in front of you as a competitor, the New Zealand origin always, you, 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 you need to understand why is New Zealand exporting that much? What are they making? How are they are making money? How is the, is the structure cost of the farmer in New Zealand? And so on. So then you can make better uh, guess about where the market is going and what you can do to to to, uh, to compete against them. So very understand to understand your market structure. Um, and for instance, for the for the wood pallet. So usually the, the market works like this in Europe, and I mean for wood pallet um, for residential use. Okay. Usually there is like Big retailers, I mean, in uh, Germany, there's the, the, the guy called uh, OB, o, OBI, oh yeah, OB, OBI. Uh, and, uh, in Switzerland, the a guy called Landi. Um, the American, for the people um, that know a little bit America, the, uh, um, the American equivalent of those uh, retail store would be like Home Depot. You know those big, big uh, retail shop where you can get everything to to fix your house or to do gardening and so on. So this is so you're, there is those big uh, retailers. Usually they buy their uh, product directly out of uh, saw miles or out of producer. So that means that they do not use traders in between. And a lot of the market is like this uh, with EU intra trade. So the retailers buy directly from the from the supplier and there is no traders. And there is one good reason that there is no usually no usually no traders um, with wood product. It's because as you have seen in the first uh, chart about the price, the price is has been extremely uh, extremely um, quiet, quiet for for years. So that means that everyone would uh, would bought I don't know. 2020 euros uh, and and that was it so that was there was there were not really a need for traders uh, in those markets because it's really calm and also one of the um, of the use of the traders it's to de-risk the purchase or de-risk the sale and if you buy from a european country to another european country there is like less need of uh, de-risking and there's also less need of financing because it, it, as i said th those products are not really cheap so um this is why uh, it's important to, to understand the, the market. And there is some there, there were some really small traders out of East Europe. And again, why there were only small traders in East Europe, it's because the, the margin is really thin. I mean, if you make like five, uh, five euros or 10 euros per metric ton when the market is normal, I mean, it's going to be tough to, to have a good business or to live on, on that small margin. Um, so, but if you live in East Europe and your cost of uh, living is quite uh, is lower, maybe you, you can make a business of it. To, to it. So, 
There is like few few traders here and there, but it's always like really small company. Um, there is another market. So this is for retail store. But then if you go to the industrial use of pallet, uh, then there is like real traders um, uh, that buy uh, pallets in uh, in bulk in Canada or in the US, ship it in uh, North uh, North Europe, and then use it to to power their their uh, industrial furnace. So. But it's quite a different market. So anyway, so market structure, extremely important to understand it, and especially who makes the margin and who makes the money. So de-risk. The other point that you, you need to understand is the this de-risking point. So as a trader, the more risk you take on for your buyers, or for your sellers, the more money you are going to make. So the more margin you can take. In the case of the wood palette, as it's EU trade, there's really, really, it's a low risk. So this is why there is less margin to make. So that's, uh, that's it's purely, uh, that's yeah, it's, it's like that. So, um, but that doesn't mean that there is no margin, especially now that the market is a wire, there is a bigger margin because uh, uh, when the market goes to, when this is chaos, people don't really have the tools or to, um, to arbitrage, buying from one origin to another. So. There is like way more opportunity that way, and when you're in that type of market, market as a trader, you can still make money matching supply and demand, because this is not an extremely mature market. So maybe in the EU, in the wood pallet, uh, EU origin, it's not going to be about de-risking, but it's more going to be about matching supply and demand because the market is uh, in a chaotic state. Finance. Another point is. Uh, if you want to start trading a new commodity, is how you are going to finance it. Are you going to use a bank? Are you going to use uh, your friend, your family? Uh, are you going to use a fund? How are you going to finance it? If you have no way to finance it, then don't, don't do it. Man. <laughs> you are going to spend a lot of time for, for nothing. In the case of the wood palette, I can finance, uh, uh, I think, anything. I mean, the, the price of that truck is, as I said, like less than 15K. Um, even if you do 10 trucks and so on, I mean, uh, this is not really an issue to find the money. Future point, so vision. Another point that is quite important if you want to, you want to start a, a new, com trade a new commodity or you want to start your business is what is the future trend with this, with this uh, commodity? Is there going to be more of this com commodity in demand in the future or is it going to be less demand of that commodity in the future? For instance, a product like, um, like lead. Uh, lead uh, used to be, we as a species, we used to use, uh, we used to use a lot of lead everywhere but we found out that it's uh, extremely toxic toxic that so the the lead price just uh, dropped because everyone was trying to use uh, something else than lead um so yeah what is uh, the five years ten years horizon of the commodity that you want to start because starting and trading a new commodity is extremely difficult so you need to um you need to know what you what you do so i mean you need to if you start to you need to know where you are going and kind of have in mind, is it a good market to be in or is it a bad market to be in? Is it a dying market or is it a booming market? Is it a booming market? My assumption with the wood pallet is uh, twofold. So the first assumption is that I don't think that um, the, 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 sadly, I don't think the war, uh, the current war is going to stop. So that means that the price of energy are going, are going to remain for the next winter quite kind of high. And so this is great for wood pallet because wood pallet is used as a, as a substitution. And also this winter as a lot of people in Europe um, so that their bill just exploded, in the, the price of everything just exploded. A lot of people are buying wood pallet store and also a lot of um, home owners are going to put wood pallet uh, the system in their home because they are like, look, we've got uh, fucked by the, the poor. Shouldn't say that because then it's bad for you too. But we got, uh, we had to pay like a, a big expensive hitting bill uh, this year. I'm not going to do this mistake again. I'm going to switch to wood pallet. So my assumption is that for the next winter, there's going to be a lot of new demand for this wood pallet, and uh, there's going to be a lot of volatility again. Um, second point is that I've seen that industrial are starting to mix wood pallet and coal, especially in Germany. Um, for to power their, their their industry, that's mean even though this is not the exact same market as uh, uh, as uh, the retail palette, 
it's still going to impact it. So I think the future for wood pellet is bright. Um, and also for Europe, if they want to be energy independent, uh, as it's, I think it's like it's forbidden to dig for oil or coal uh, in, uh, in most of the European country, wood is there. Is there is to be used, so it would make sense. So I think for all, for all of that reason, wood uh, pellet is going to be to have a bright future for the next two to three years at least. Edge. So now, what? Let's say that you want to start a new community. What is your edge over your competition? Um, and by edge, I mean what do you do? What would you do differently that would make you make more money or have a, a advantage against your competition against other traders? What 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 is your plan? You need to have some idea. You need to have something that makes you a little bit different than the competition. Otherwise, what is your reason of being in this market? If you do everything like the others. You, at the end of the way, all the margin are going to be competed away. So you need to do something differently. You need to have an edge if you want to start in a new commodity. Otherwise, it, I mean, just forget it. In our case, with wood pellet, uh, I think the edge is quite uh, is there. So as I explained, there is not a lot of uh, traders of big uh, traders uh, that do wood pellet because of the of the market structure that it's very difficult to live on small margin and so on. So that means that usually uh, wood pellet traders, they have the knowledge of only one specific area, and which is a bit of a shame because if you don't know the price is everywhere, for example, in Europe, you could miss like arbitrage opportunity. So my idea is that what we are going to do with the sales uh, community bootcamp is that if we can have like students everywhere in Europe speaking at people with uh, yeah, every, speaking with buyers everywhere in Europe, so you can we can collect prices from the whole geography, and then we have a better um, informational knowledge about where is the market compared to the competition, because the competition is one or two guys, you know. They cannot spend, uh, there are not 10 people asking 20, 30 buyers what would be the price, you know. So first, this is um, the competition advantage about the network that we can create with, other, with, with uh, all the students. Then the second advantage is also, uh, as a size of the company, is that if I have, uh, I don't know, let's say five students that make sales and we have a revenue split about who is making money and so on. For, for me, I think it would be like maybe a great business because otherwise, if I would need to be a, a trader, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to, to make the money of five people, you see. So I think it's a win-win situation for everyone because I would be able to make money because we aggregate a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, students and each student can make money as a side hustle with their own market. Again, I don't think that it's possible to get uh, to have uh, to live well with only this uh, this uh, this uh, this for the for the guy that he sells. But I think it would be a great side hustle, especially that there is a lot of seasonality. Because as you can imagine, most of the pellets is used um, during the winter, so summer is quite quiet. During the summer, people are more um, yeah just as stocking if they want to to try to um, to speculate a little bit uh, but there is just less demand so uh so yes ah, and uh, yes about the edge also something that i haven't uh, said about the future i think in the future one thing which is possible that we could do if this worked well for us is we can stock uh, a strategic location storage a food product for the next uh, winter and also we can try to to put a fit into the industrial uh, wood pellet market, which is way bigger, but I think with my connection and so on, this is also something that we may be able to do in the future. But before doing that, we need to make sure that we already have like a book of clients that we could sell. So this is why there is uh, the student. So that's it uh, for me. So if you want to have like a resume of what I've just said, you can just go below the video and click and download the framework. I will send you the framework by email. And uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. So. If you have like uh, any question, just shoot. And also, if you have the question about the sales and commodity boot, so the commodity um, sales commodity boot camps, uh, just uh, yeah, shoot, no problem. I'm here to answer uh, 1,044 euros. So this is why, yeah, yeah. So that's a mistake of my side. Yeah. So this is what you need to do to enable the chat. So sorry again. <laughs> sorry again. Uh, here we go. Hey, Tari. 
हेलो हाय वाइट थैंक्स जीत Yeah, uh, salad. I would, yeah, it's only one type of wood. Actually, it's going to be only one. Um, we are going to send all, uh, only one origin. It's going to be out, out of uh, Greece. Um, because right now, uh, the wood palette, as I said, uh, the wood palette market is extremely, extremely, it's extremely difficult to find a producer willing to sell to you because they are all completely booked. Um, so this is why we had the, the chance to, to find this guy. Uh, because actually, it's a friend of mine that also have a community trading company that uh, put me on, the, on this. And then, um, yeah, so we have an allocation of, out of this producer. This producer is only producing uh, for his uh, local market right now. Really old school. You know, I mean, people need to go there and, and buy the, the, the bags directly uh, at, the, at the processing plant. So as you can see, they're not extremely developed in type of sales. So this is why, the, yes, this is the opportunity. And then, uh, yeah, I think well, actually tonight, they were already one of uh, the students. I think he's going to have a lunch with a, a dinner tonight uh, with a potential buyer. So maybe by the end of uh, of this uh, chat, the one containers are all already going to be uh, sold. Hopefully, we'll see. Yeah, thanks, Maxwell. Yeah, just uh, send uh, an email to uh, to the support, and you will get all, all the details. But yeah, I, mean, I think it's going to be a, a great, uh, actually, uh, I think we're going to have fun. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, so um, uh, actually what we are going to do is um, they already produce, I think, 300 metric ton or something like this. Um, and uh, we are going to buy from uh, my uh, my friend's company. And he, um, I think this is his kids literally buy the, the, the plant. So this is why, uh, the, actually, this is how we found the, this producer. So yeah, he's going to be the one in charge of uh, making sure that the quality is right and he's going to be the one there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, actually, most of the retail clients, they want their, uh, I mean, they want their own brand, if possible, or if not, at least one brand. But uh, right now, we are just going to set like a blank uh, bag because Oh, and with one just one lab, one uh, label that we just uh, stick on the bags because, um, as I said, the market is extremely tense. A lot of people are, are trying to buy some, so we can go. go yeah, we can use blank uh, blank bags uh, with uh, with that. Of course, it wouldn't be possible if the market was not in a, a tense situation. But this is what we are going to do. A typical order. I mean, the, the, the smallest order would be uh, twenty two. Uh, I think metric ton. Because uh, this is the size of a, uh, this is the load of a truck. I think the truck is 24 metric ton in Europe, but with the pallets and the packing and so on, you are going to sell 22.5, I think, metric ton of pallets. But yeah, but typical order actually, I, I don't know for that type of market. I don't really know what is a typical order, but usually it's way more than that. But uh, the smallest one is 24, 20, 22 metric ton. Yeah, but Gabriel, it's uh, not for you, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, actually, yeah, this is what I said to a lot of people. I mean, that are not based in Europe. It's going to be. Uh, I mean, what what time is it going? It's uh, that you need to be at least. Um, it, it's always easier to sell in your own language. So if you're from Germany, it's going to be easier to sell in uh, to a German people. I think a kid that twenty years old kid out of Germany can sell to a retail retail store in uh, Germany. This is not really an issue, but if you only if you are a seasoned salesman out of, uh, I don't know, the US and you want to sell to the same German shop, it's going to be harder. It's definitely. 
So yeah, this is not, if you're not in Europe, it's going, uh, no, this is not for you. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, 24, uh, 22, I think it's 22 for the truck. Uh, this is the smallest size. Uh, after that, um, okay. If you are extremely lucky or extremely good or whatever, you can make like a two, um, if you have two clients, two small clients, with the same region, maybe with one truck, you can make two cells. So, but that's getting to be logistically quite complicated. And especially that, um, you know, this is those tilt truck. So that's mean that um, usually the smaller buyer, they don't have the, the, the means to unload the truck because you need to have like a kit to, uh, to be able to unload it quite quickly. So you need to make sure that the guy has at least a forklift to, to take the pallets out of the truck and then uh, put it away. So. If it's a really small shop, maybe it's not the, the, the machinery to to safely unload it. No, no, we don't. We actually, we, we, we only, okay. One thing important is we are going to use this uh, producer out of Greece because um, if you want to sell with confidence, you need to have at least one part of the deal. It does uh, one part of the, of the of the trade. So if you don't know your buyers, you don't know your suppliers, uh, you want to make it happen, it's going to be I mean, a shitload of work and I'm not really sure that it's going to work. So um, no, no, we are at that stage, we are only going to focus on the, this guy out of Veracruz. Yeah, so uh, we are going to give uh, all the details on the student how to find the leads. But uh, I mean, the buyers are retail shop, like gardening shop, uh, uh, home improvement shops, uh, retail store. Uh, also, if you, um, I don't know the name in English, but the guy that installed your heat uh, stuff in your house, they also, they also often uh, sell pallets. Um, yeah, all of those type of people. And usually it's delivered in uh, in truck, but um, some biggest buyer they like it by by containers. Especially though we are going to ship out of Greece, so there is a port nearby. So if there is buyers in the UK or in the north of Europe, it's way cheaper by container than by a truck. Uh, man, I will, I will we will give you the the, <laughs> the quote. Uh, don't worry, but I think the price now is 500 uh, euros 50 or something like this per metric ton. But again, it will depend on the, the destination. No, no, there's like a, a lot of production. We can actually, the, if we sell more, then we will have more. But uh, they produce uh, 300 metric ton, 400 metric ton for us to start. And then if we sell more, they will produce more. Yeah, it's my money that is going to find the deal. Unless there is like a big one, and then uh, hopefully uh, uh, we'll find a way to finance it. But uh, it's not really it's not really the uh, the problem. The the only issue that uh, some people will face is that in some country they have imposed a price cap uh, on the price of the pallet. I think the price is uh, four hundred euros, so it's it's way less than the the price uh, the, on the market. So. There is this uh, government, uh, the scheme scheme from the government, which is said that, okay, you can buy at a higher price. You just uh, keep the invoice and so on. And then we uh, are going to repair the, the differences between the price that you bought and the price of the current, um, of the current uh, cap of 400 euros. But the problem is that it only works for the big, uh, big uh, retailers or the big shop because you need to finance, I mean, to, to have the mean to get the, the product finance for like six months. I mean, when you get the money from the government back, so uh, they say yeah, it's, uh, that stuff. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> I think we have a really good price out of uh, Greece, to be honest, also. Yeah, I, I mean, the producer is a, uh, okay, we are buying from a training company, which is uh, heavily tied with the producer. And the training company is my friend's um, co uh, company. That's, uh, and he's the one that said, look, I mean, you need to look at the palette. I have this deal with the producer. 
Um, he's already working on a lot of stuff. I mean, he can't can do everything. So uh, this is how <laughs> everything happened. And then I look at the market. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, oh this is a, a great market for uh, <laughs> for for the students because um, if someone said, oh, Damien, I'm going to start a wood pellet uh, training company, I'm like, dude, this is a very bad idea because uh, of the structure of the market, as I explained. But the way uh, we, we are going to do it, I think uh, this would be the only way that uh, it could work at scale. But maybe I'm wrong, we'll see. No, 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 the, the, the premium is, I mean, the price in, in the US is well lower than that, but cost of shipping and so on. Um, but also the, the quality is not exactly the same. Uh, so this is why the, the, the product out of US is used for industrial use uh, in Europe and not for um, eating your home. I think the type of food, or I don't know, is they have different certificate. Um, there are different uh, names for different type of pellets, and uh, usually the one you get out of uh, the US um, is not really suitable for if you have a wood store in your in your home. I don't know why actually this way at, at that moment, but um, what is the reason? I think it's maybe because it it it's. The smoke is, is, it needs to be soft wood. And I think most of the thing in the US in, in Canada is a hard wood and hard wood has a, has a like blackish smoke and soft wood is like white. And, and when you use it to heat your home, you don't want black, black, uh, black smoke or, uh, yeah, here, but uh, maybe I'm completely wrong. Yeah, so uh, anything about Below 600 euros is uh, delivered is a, is a good price, I think, right now. But market is decreasing a little bit uh, the past week. Maybe it's a bit lower than that, but I don't think so. Yes, that. And I think you, you were the one, um, you're the Turkish guy in Poland or in Netherlands, right? If I remember you well. No, no, right now we'll do a, a truck and the containers, but that's it. Bulk shipment will be for industrial usage out of, but it's, uh, it's not what we want to do. I mean, at least this, uh, at this stage. Yeah, I th yeah, I think in Poland and in, in the Netherlands, this is a too big market and we have no, no students, so. Ah, beside you. So guys, though, if you have like any questions, I will um, stick around uh, 10 minutes. Um, is it back-to-back -back trade? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a back-to-back. -back. Um, yeah, uh, there's like no speculation, no forward contract, whatever it's, we, we buy when we, we yeah, when we have a, a, a sale. Starting a pilot can soon, what's the best way to start trading ferrochrome? <laughs> Man, <laughs> a pilot plant of what, uh, Tariq? Uh, a ferrochrome? I, do you have a, a wash plant? Are, are you starting a wash plant? Why is it? Yeah, yes, I did. Expect okay. Oh, oh, uh, in which country? But Tarek, do you do you have the mine? Oh, it's only the plant, and you are going to buy from different mine, or what's the situation? And do you already have buyers for your phone? is in Dubai and you are going to buy Chrome 
ship to Dubai and then um, make the ferro come there? What, what, what the plan, dude? So send me an email actually about, about, um, uh, about, about your project if you want help. Uh, yes, yes, of course, of course. Um, but uh, I think, but my uh, no, no, it's not only for one to three months stops because uh, uh, next winter is going to be the same unless the war um, uh, stop. And also, it's uh, I think before the war, four million of uh, metric, four million of metric tons of wood pellet um, out of Russia went to Europe, and this stopped. This is also why the the price is uh, really high. And I also think that um, this may be um, uh, we need to see what is going to be the, the month uh, next year, uh, to have their new wood pellet uh, eating system in place and so on in everywhere in Europe. So we need to see what is what is what the demand is going to be, and that should be the new normal for at least a few few next years. Yes, yeah, yeah, dude. Send, send me the send me the details of what you are you are doing right now. But uh, Dubai, I mean, it's cool. So uh, yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, if you have, yeah, I think you you have my email. So if you've been following me uh, for a while, yeah, I mean, if the war stop, then uh, I think the I'm not really sure that the the wood pellet um, trading would. Oh, uh, uh, intra Europe would would uh, would still be like a, a good business model, but, uh, but pff, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm, I don't really know <laughs> so, about the geopolitical situation and who is winning or what. So, uh, uh, no, not, not at that moment. But um, if we, uh, but, yeah, not not at that moment. But uh, but I'll, I'll 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 keep that in mind. I mean, where we would really get uh, where we would hit is that if uh, let's say that uh, it, it goes very well, we have like a small book of clients. And then, for whatever reason, I'm like, look, Damien, I, I feel that like I, I want to speculate on the wood pellet price. This summer, we buy a lot of wood pellet, we stock it, and then, anyway, whatever happened that makes the wood pellet go go back to the to the two 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 hundred euros price, and then we, we we lose a lot of money. So that would be the worst case scenario for me. And then, but that's uh, so. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Yes, yes, and you know, uh, Europe, there's like no, there's no raw materials to, to, to produce energy out there beside wood. So, uh, yes, I did, I did, but not like a full-blown uh, sugar trader. Uh, but uh, yeah, we did, we did few uh, sugar shipment, but it was, uh, you know, ten years ago now uh, to West Africa. Because I used to have like a big book of clients there, um, and mostly focused on dairy product, palm oil, um, cocoa product, or so. Uh, and some of them needed uh, sugar, so we did uh, some <laughs> trades. But sugar, it's a very complicated market. I mean, you need to be a big trader. You need to have a good funding if you want to to go there, because it's very competitive. Uh, I'm not sure to get your, your question then. Uh, is there <coughs> are existing pellet based uh, power plants at capacity in Europe? Is there like a power plant that uses pellet right now? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, it's actually this, this is the case in Europe. Yeah, sure. But the thing is, they are already. I think they have. I'm not really sure about what I'm going to say, but my guess is that they already have a um, year-long contract with a big energy supplier like uh, LWE or th those type of guys. That, so basically, they finance the installation or help financing, and then they supply the product. Um, so, but I need to check that. I'm not really sure at that moment. Any <laughs> Do you, do you have the choice? <laughs> I mean, it's a, what, 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 I think, uh, yeah, I mean, the big one, the, the, the best one, if you want to, to start as an internship, like, so Cargyle, um, what the, um, Olam, um, what the biggest two, uh, Barricalibo, um, yeah. <laughs> but what, what, what's the best one? It's like, oh, if you see, um, I don't know, like Scarlett Johansson and Emma Watson. Uh, which which one of, would you choose uh, to date? I mean, the, the one that accepts. Maybe. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> or maybe you, maybe the son of um, the president of in Ivory Coast, and that's why you have the choice. That's also a possibility. Okay, guys, I'm going to stick a few more minutes. That's really a pain in the ass, this, um, this chat that didn't work. Um, anyway. Okay, so I think that's it for today. So it was the first live, to, uh, first live of the year. So thanks uh, all of you guys for for being here, um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.